I'm pr uh, proud of our guys, uh, how we competed uh, tonight, uh, continued to battle uh, for four quarters. I'm really, you know, not tonight. I'm really uh, proud of our guys for everything they've gone through this season. Uh, go play an 11 game SEC schedule has never been done before. Uh, to go through all the adversity we've had to face throughout the year, uh, starting back to the day we're supposed to start spring practice to get uh, pulled off the field. To all the questions and the doubts all through the summer, if there's going to be a season, to start in the season and having to shut it down after three weeks, uh, to coming back and going through week after week after week, not knowing until Friday morning if you're even going to play a game, uh, to show up and compete every single week. I'm, I'm really proud of our guys and everything that they did and how they, they've, how they held themselves um, and play to the high level. Uh, you never stop competing till the clock hits zero. Edgar. I mean, Dan, no such thing as moral victories, I know, but what do you guys take away from just the way the team rallied? I mean, the first half, things were going south pretty badly. And just about what character did you guys show tonight? Well, I mean, I thought we showed a lot of character tonight. You know, like I said, I mean, the, the, uh, Talk about competing as a team. We're always going to compete. We're always going to battle. Always going to fight and play uh, for four quarters. Um, you know, that was an excellent football team we played tonight. A lot of talented players uh, on their team. Um, you know, give them credit. I mean, that's why they're they're ranked the number one team in the country, uh, deservedly so. And um, but it is, you know, I mean, it showed, it showed the character that our guys have. You know, but they've they've shown that this entire season for everything that we've been through. I've got audio on mine. So, to, in terms of the defense, I mean, w w what's your just assessment? I mean, that you played the best offense in the SEC here, but yeah. the first half particularly, I mean, five possessions, five scores. Yeah, but I think four of them were stops, and they got first downs on penalties, or they got a third down penalties early. You know, I think we made some mistakes. You know, you're, you're coming into this game, and, and you, there's things you got to have to do to win. Um, you know, win the turnover battle. We didn't do that. Uh, we, you know, we made some a bunch of mental mistakes that really hurt ourselves on defensively in the first half on third down with opportunities to get off the field, and we have some penalties and not get off the field. Um, you know, so um, give up the give up that drive at the end of the the first half. You know, um, all that's that's disappointing, obviously. But you know, our guys continued to battle all the way to the end, right? That stop there at the end was, uh, you know, I mean, they, they gritted it up and, and got a stop to give the offense ball one more time. Thanks, Tom. Gene. Uh, yeah, Dan, um, could you just talk about when you, what you think this game, uh, very emotional game, but coming back against the number one team in the country will do for the trajectory of your program moving forward in terms of the messages sends about your program well i think you know our guys now there we got young we got some young guys that have been here and they're going to be hungry to get back here you know that's the goal to get here to this game uh and go compete you know um y you know i mean y usually you're you're looking at it at every year of this game some of the, the best teams in the country are playing each other in this game and so uh you know uh to be here um uh, was great for our guys. Um, obviously, you know, we want a lot more than just getting here and showing up. But I mean, that's what we control, and our focus is going to be getting here again next year, and then competing and in, in, uh, to win this game. And um, so, uh, I think that'll help, and that'll that'll have great focus for us um, going into the off season. Thank you, River. Hi, Coach. Um, you know, on that final touchdown there, Kyle Pitt had a fantastic catch in the corner of the end zone. Um, you've had a lot of weapons over the course of the year. Can you talk a little bit about Kyle Pitts now that the season is over and that possibly uh, he might not be coming back next year and what he's done for the program this year? Well, I think, you know what, I mean, he, he's shown he's the best tight end in, in college football. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, he's a dynamic playmaker all over the field. And, uh, you know, I mean, you can play him inside, play him outside, uh, you know, a great blocker. And I think he, he's a guy that um, obviously I think has worked his tail off uh, to put himself in the position he's in, you know. Um, 
and uh, you know, uh, he's a great young guy. I mean, worked his tail off to even be able to play today, uh, and then come out and had a huge game. Um, but I mean, he's uh, he's a great, high character young guy, great leader in the locker room, um, always and an a tremendous worker. And I think um, you know his drive shows out there on the field with with where his you know where his performance has has gotten to. Thank you, Coach. Cassidy. Hey, Dan, uh, two quick things. Just first, after that Kyle Pitts touchdown, can you just kind of take us through the thought process of the timeout? Yeah, that and was just... bad. That was bad clock management on my part. I should have just, we should have had bad it ready to go for two. And, and you know, our, our thought, though, is we're going for two right there. Uh, we're going to try the onside kick. We're here to win. Uh, and it would have given us two two-point conversions at it, you know. So if we didn't get the first one, we'd have to get the second one to tie. And if we got the first one, all we needed there was an extra point to win the game at the end. Uh, so that was kind of the thought process to go for two, um, you know, and then that, that's a that's a that's a bad job by me. We had to, to use that timeout there. Would have loved to have that timeout and given us an extra forty seconds with the ball to try to get the game winning touchdown. And then the second thing, uh, just kind of following up on what Gene was talking about, you've shown that you can get here and that you can hang with Alabama. What's the next step, the next building block to to the program winning this? Yeah, we got to get a little better up front on both sides of the ball, I think. You know, I mean, our guys play hard. got to be, you know, I mean, you look, they're a little more physical, I think, uh, at the line of scrimmage than we were, you know. Um, so we got to get a little bit better uh, up front. Um You know, get back here and get another shot at them next year. Or whoever is here from the West. I don't want to, like, you know, you guys all freak out. Like, I, I'd, like, just trash talk to everybody else on that side of the league, you know. I'm going to get back here and take a shot at whoever they comes from the West next year. Nick. Uh, I was going to ask about that, but uh, can you just – Kadarius Tony, the strides he's made this season, they had another monster game today. Um and just the effort he's put out the last two weeks, is that kind of a representation of, of the kind of person he is? Yeah, I mean, he is. He's a, I mean, he's an awesome, awesome young guy. You know, I mean, came here and, um, you know, you, you get to know him and it's um, not all. And he's probably not the easiest person in the world to get to know at first. But once you get to know him, he's a tremendous, unbelievable um uh, Unbelievable man. I mean, he, uh, you know, I mean, his work ethic, his competitive nature, his desire to be great. Uh, and, you know, that shows shows out there, you know, and everything. You know, I mean, he, uh, I mean, he, he can, he's a great route runner, got tremendous hands, has learned to have a great feel for the game on how to get open. Uh, you can hand it to him out of the backfield. Heck, you know, I mean, he's got an unbelievable arm. You could go line him up a quarterback. So, um, you know, I mean, he, he has a very, very bright future ahead of him in the game of football. And what was the, the mood in the locker room? What was your message to the team after the disappointing loss? Uh, you know what? I think everybody's extremely disappointed. Uh, you know, we wanted to win the game, expected to win the game. Um, you know, a little bit somber because I know, you know, it's probably the last time this team ever plays together. And, you know, that's a that's a tough deal. So, uh you know, but I, I think there was a, a lot of guys that uh, really care about each other, um, you know, and have really worked hard to get here to this point. Um, so I know there's a great deal of disappointment in the locker room, uh, but there's also a lot of respect for all the everything that everybody on this team went through and did for this year, and there's a lot of love for the guys and the family that this team is. You think that – will you guys turn down a bowl game? You said this will be the last time they play together? I don't. I have no idea. I, we just played this game, so you, I know you want to go run with everything, and you guys like to blow things way out of proportion and everything. But I, I, that was probably, that was really the last time this team will play together. Okay, I, I, I imagine whatever holds the future holds. I imagine that this team as a whole of how it is will be the last one to play together. You, you guys, I know you want to run and make stuff up all the time. So go do that if you want. But close with Edgar. Dan, how do you just pr process a loss like this personally? I mean, you have to be drained right now, emotionally, physically. I mean, that was a roller coaster. Well, I'll be honest with you. This season's been emotionally draining. You know, uh, emotional. I don't. I don't. It, hard to say. Teams have gone through what we've gone through, right? I think that was our eighth consecutive SEC game. Uh, 
it's amazing the emotional and physical toll that takes on your body for the players. You know, coaches, we'll be fine. We'll get back to work tomorrow uh, and get this program headed back in the right direction. In, in Not in the right direction. I think we're headed in the right direction. Get this program back to getting on path to trying to get here again next year um, to compete for championships. I think you guys know that when I say, you know, it will to be a great program, program that, that – uh, competes for championships on a consistent basis, and we want to do that. So, but I do know for our players, this season has been in a, a massive emotional and physical tolls um, that I, I'll be honest, I don't know anybody else in the country's been through. Uh, I don't know anybody who's played eight consecutive SEC games right now. Um, I don't know anybody's played eight consecutive conference games. Um, so I'm really proud of our guys for for their com commitment and, and desire to battle and fight. I mean, when you're, I guess when you're thinking about this, <clears throat> which you'll do endlessly, I'm sure, and replaying it, what's going to stand out? What's, what are you going to replay and, and focus on now? Well, I mean, there's a lot, you know, I mean, hey, we, you know, we, we, the, the little mistakes we made, you know, during the game, how do we get that stuff fixed? How do I make sure, you know, that, that we're not making the little errors uh, in the game that cost us the game? Nice performance. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Go Gators. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays. You too.